Welcome, friends, to The Hero Beside Me, the podcast that seeks to explore the professional and private lives of working dogs of all kinds. For thousands of years, humans and canines have shared a special bond and an essential partnership, which continues to grow in importance in our society today. Dogs are helping humans in a myriad of ways, performing essential tasks that only they can perform. The more we learn about them, the more endless their potential seems to be. It is my goal to document the way these amazing animals are making an indelible mark on our world with their astonishing abilities, incredible drive, insatiable zest for life, and unconditional love, which they generously bestow upon their humans. Join me as I explore the wonder of these canine heroes beside us. Welcome back, listeners. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I have a real treat for you. In this episode, I invite you to join me as I tag along with Red Rock Hounds, a foxhound hunt club just outside of Reno, Nevada. We'll get to ride alongside as the members ride their horses behind their pack of hounds through the high desert on a glorious winter day and watch these incredible working dogs in action. can never get bored of this. It's almost impossible. <laughs> it is so much fun and you learn a lot and you meet a lot of cool people and you, it's just, it's one of the coolest communities of people I think I've ever been a part of. We all just love and respect each other so much. It literally is a family. It's not even a club, it's a family. That's Sid. She's a member of the club. And on this day, she was gracious enough to drive us around in her truck so that we could follow the hunt and so I could photograph them for the Hero Beside Me photography project. You can check out some of the photos at herobeside.me. Sid has been fox hunting since her childhood, and for her, it's a family sport. My name's Robin Keith. I'm the grandmother. And my history with, with uh, fox hunting is, is capsulized, I think, in, in the statement that I got my colors to hunt, which is a designation. When on my 70th birthday, and I got on my first horse ever in my life when I was 65. No way. Yeah, and I so so I'm in this sport because of my daughter Amy and my granddaughter Sydney. Yeah, my mom was the one who kind of started horses in our family. She when she was a kid, all she ever wanted to do was ride horses, and she started fox hunting when I was eight barely even born oh, that's and, yeah she started oh, fox hunting a long that. time ago and she got me into it when i was about six years old and we've been hunting as a family ever since before recording this episode i knew virtually nothing about fox hunting with hounds but this group of hunters welcomed myself and my husband and we sure learned a lot about the work these dogs do as we got to witness it firsthand to kick off the day the group gathered at the fixture which is what they call the place where their hunt begins for the day they saddled up their horses. The hounds were in a trailer, sticking their noses out of the windows in anticipation of what was to come. Before releasing the hounds, the hunt members gathered in a circle for their pre-hunt huddle. They were all wearing the classic fox hunting uniform, white pants, tall boots, helmets or velvet hunt caps, and thigh-length coats with big buttons. Paulette Schneider, who you heard in episode 23, Meet Me in the Snow Cave, introduced us to the group. Okay, everybody, today we have a guest. Uh, this is Shauna and her husband, Andrew. She is, she is doing a podcast on working dogs. I can send out the um, website and you can see all the pictures she's taken. It's, uh, they're, they're beautiful pictures. And she's, uh, it's a photo journal and a podcast. And she is asked, uh, through Jeff, if we'd be willing to um, let her take pictures of our working hounds. Sid is driving her around. She's going to try to leapfrog ahead so that Shauna can get pictures of us coming towards her. And uh, we're going to do the best we can to give you some photos. 
and she's never been around a hunt before, and this is us. This is what we do for fun. And some of us get money for it, huh, Bill? <laughs> so, and I told you that most of us that have on the red coats are the ones that, that call the whips that are out on the outside, and we kind of keep the hounds going together. And um, anything else, uh, Angela? Angela is our huntsman. You met her earlier. Yeah, we got to meet. Okay. We have 13 couples, so that's 26 hounds. So you count hounds in pairs. And so they'll all come out and I and empty for a little bit. And then Sid's going to get you guys wherever you need, we hope, where you need to be. And maybe if we get lucky, yesterday we were hunting at a coyote. We had two guests and a coyote with the whole pack behind it ran right across the road in front of them. So... I don't know. I, well, I don't know if we'll get that lucky, but we'll try. After the huddle, they released the hounds. And a few minutes later, they mounted their horses, and the hunt was on. My husband, our dog, and myself all jumped into Sid's truck, and off we went. <laughs> scenting works is it drifts just like anything else so it's like when your mom's making cookies in the kitchen it, it fans throughout your house so the path that a coyote walks down they leave a scent behind the hounds as as the wind blows as things move as certain things come across it the scent will move a little bit so it's not necessarily the direct line that the coyote walked on it's more of the general direction general direction you might want to go past those white trailers and get us coming up that way around them. Copy that. We're going to go up that road a little bit and get them coming across here. And then she's going to start hunting all of these low foothills over there. When she starts getting over there, I can only follow her so far. There's a huge ditch in the road out there. Lately, how our coyotes have been working is we um, have been splitting a brace. So when you split a brace of coyotes, it's usually a male and a female, they're together. And male and female coyotes run differently. But anyway, usually anymore, we don't find this coyote on its own. We, we, we call it splitting the pack. So one, one, a group of hounds will go on one coyote, a group of hounds will go on the other. And it is the weirdest thing to watch, but our hounds are extremely good at it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go down here a little bit because I think they're gonna come right there. So that, that sound she just blew, mm -hmm. she's like, she wants him to slow down a little bit. She wants him to say, hey, whoa, 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 I want you, I want you to slow down and, and really be methodical through that. So Raina out there, what she's doing is she's listening to the horn. And when Angela blows certain things, it's some, you don't even have to tell our staff what to do. She knows that Angela wants these hounds back a little bit so that they can go the other way. So Angela's changing direction. The hounds key into that. So once Angela's, they follow Angela's horse's nose. Okay. So when Angel's horse turns and Raina circled around to bring him back, Come back over here with me. they they know to turn around. So what Angel is doing right now, she's just being patient and watching what her hounds are doing. Because quite honestly, what what that was right there is you, you don't really know what that was. They're just opening. They're they're being curious. They're they're hounds. They're, they're hunting, and Angela is one of the most patient huntsmen I've ever hunted with she she waits and responds to her hounds because she trusts them enough to make their own decisions and if angela finally decides after watching them that it's a bad one she will then be like okay guys come back we're gonna go this way We'll just start at the basics. What is fox hunting? Fox hunting is using a pack of hounds here in in uh, Nevada and in the West. What we're the prey that we're looking for are uh, coyote, and there's plenty of those. We don't in Nevada. We do not have any foxes. Uh, 
there are some gray foxes clear on the east side of the state, but here all we have is coyote. We use a pack of hounds who are scent hounds, and we cast them out in different areas, and they use their nose to find where the coyote has been. And then they use their nose to follow the scent that the coyote uh, leaves behind when he makes his moves and stuff. Do you hunt the coyote to sell their pelt or? No, we're at North America for the most part. Uh, all the fox hunting clubs, because we're a club, uh, are no kill for the most part. There are some. And we have 163, did you say? I think 163 in the state, clubs in the state. Clubs. Fox hunting. Uh, no, no, I'm in the United States. In the United States. States. We're the yeah. only one in Nevada. Where did it originate, fox hunting? Or the, I should say the sport of fox hunting. England, Ireland. George Washington had a pack. Yep. He hunted, he hunted foxes. And uh, foxhounds were brought over from England and Ireland and brought to the United States way back when. And fox hunting back then, it was a sport then as well? or, or In maybe? England and Ireland, it was a sport, but it had a purpose because the, the uh, foxes were like rodents or something. They would kill the farmer's chickens and other animals and stuff. And so it kind of uh, evolved where it would go, they would go out for sport, but they also were looking for the foxes to get rid of them. And they kill, or they killed at that time, the foxes to get rid of them for the farmers. Oh, okay. So they're like, hey, we need to get rid of this pest. Right. Let's have fun doing it. This. Talk about the staff positions or just the various positions. You mentioned field master. Explain. We have a huntsman who's in charge of the hounds and decides how she's going to hunt the country that day. We have fields. We have several fields. We have first field or first flight, which is riders that can keep up with the hounds and can jump all the coops. Because we're this is BLM land that we're on. And then back east, they're hunting on private properties and people's farms and stuff. And the coops will go transition to over a fence. Yes, we, they're like an A-frame over here to over a barbed wire fence. Otherwise, you'll never keep up with the hounds because you'd have to go to a gate and open a gate and, and go through. Um, so first, first field or first flight, they keep up with the hounds and they jump. We have a field master. They're in charge of the, all the people that are riding with them. They have, they keep the noise down they, because a lot of chatter will mess with the hounds because it'll, it, you know, they're like, what, what? And anytime that you call their name or any noise that makes them lift their head, they're no longer scenting. We want them to keep their heads down and keep work doing their job. So we have a first feel master and then we have a second feel, which today we had a second feel. Um, Sid's grandmother was leading second field. They don't jump, but they keep up pretty much. So they would have to go to the gates. And then we have third field or hilltoppers, which doesn't jump, doesn't keep up, and they just keep positioning themselves so they can see what's going on. And there would usually is a, 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 master, a field master in the third field too, or somebody that's kind of in charge of that group. So the, the huntsman follows the pack of dogs. Follows and directs because she kind of knows where she wants them to go. When you say, when you use the term, I'm going to cast them here or whatever, what does that mean and what does it really entail? Well, if you fish, you cast a line over here because maybe there's a fish here. You fish over here, maybe there's a fish over here. So we do the same thing with the hounds. We cast them out over there, looking for the scent. If it's kind of blank, sometimes we'll bring them back and we'll move to another place and cast them in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, totally. What are the mechanics of it though? How do I tell a group of dogs that I want them to go in this direction and not this direction? Carefully. <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> 
Yeah, I. You know, they. You, you use your horse. Use your horse. You point your horse. They follow the the trajectory of your horse. So if you like for the whippers in, if I want them to go that way towards that corner, my horse is facing this way. And if the whippers in, the staff members, the outriders, Paulette, Raina, who you saw today, those guys, they all keep their horses faced every all the directions going this way. If the hounds come near them and it feels like it's a good track, they'll turn their horse's head away. So it's not offensive. If you turn your horse towards the hounds, they're immediately going to turn and go the other way because they think you're coming towards them. Are we in trouble? Should we not be here? They're very in tune to the horses. We use the horses to direction, for direction. But if the hounds are in front of the horses, then how do they know which direction the horse is? They're really, if you watch them, they go, they check back in. They'll make a big cast and they'll check back in. Should we go this way? And then, you you know, if I want to carry them forward or move them to another, I just start trotting. And I can pick them up and move them to, you don't have to say anything, just pick them up and move them to another place. So it'd be safe to say that the huntsman shouldn't have a trouble horse. No, you need a good horse. Because you really have a lot going on, especially now. So years ago, we certainly didn't have the, the traffic that we have, the, the people that we have out here or anywhere. And you could just put them down and let them run. But now with roads and traffic everywhere in the country and probably everywhere in the world, you have so many more people and so much more encroachment. We run them all on GPS collars. So, you you know, you're trying to hunt them, watch the wind, watch the the, the lay of the land, where the typical coy coyote might be. I mean, we've hunted this country for, I've been here for 17 years. You've been here 20. Yeah. So we know the country, we, you know, and we know where the coyotes run, what their tendencies are. Uh but you've got too much going on to have a bad horse. A staff, a whipper in as well. You need a horse that's reliable, that is going to do its job, that you don't have to ride per se. So yeah. do its job so the horse knows its job as well? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They they know as whipper ins, we stay even with her. And then you guys weren't close enough to see, but they'll get on a rabbit. Remember I told you that you, we don't allow them to chase rabbit or deer or any other things other than the coyotes or uh, cats, we all go with cats. But when they hear the hounds running after a rabbit, the horses almost take <laughs> off to go and stop those guys. They they just know a after a while, they've been doing this so long. And, the, and my horse knows when she starts trotting, my horse starts trotting. Yeah. Because I'm trying to stay even with her. You have to kind of stay even because if you get ahead of her, the hounds are so in tune to ho horses that they'll actually go farther out with you and she wants them closer to her. So we have to be careful to stay even with her so that we're all going in the same direction. And we constantly watch the huntsman. If she turns her horse that way, we turn and go that way. It, and, and the hounds will kind of do that too. They, they really key off the horses. What do you use the horns for? Only one person, so the, only the huntsman has a horn, and the hounds learn the calls. You know, one call would be, hey, I'm here. That's the toot toot when you do that. And then, and every huntsman has its, her, his or her own style. And the horn call are I'm fairly universal. The big long note, most every huntsman use that to come in. Or, so the hounds know to come in, and then when the staff hears it, they know to push the hounds in. And then we use a long call and two shorts for a turn. Hey, I'm going to turn. And pretty much the hounds will just, they're so into, into it. They'll turn right away with your horse and the horn, um, even from a long ways away. How do they know which direction to turn? They look, pick their heads up and watch your horse. But yeah, they're fascinated. I mean, they just like, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it with every kind of working dog. They're, they're so amazing, the capability. So how do you train them on what the word means they just learned from the other hounds yeah. the young yes. learn from the old because the young ones will get out there and run and all of a sudden they'll realize oh i'm by myself and they'll turn and try to catch the 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 hounds the pack or whatever and try to stay up they don't want to be out there by themselves so much what kind of breed do you use the walker hound so it's a tree walker hound it's an american foxhound not specifically originally bred for treeing I mean, for running fox, but for running coon. And then the running walker they use for pig and bear and lion. 
and we may, but we mainly use the train walker. They have a more square head, a little bit stouter body. The running walker has a little, we have a few up there, some of the longer noses, but not as much as you see as like with the cross dogs that have some cro greyhound or saluki in them. And why do you use the walker? They're like the thoroughbred of the foxhound. So they can go a long time. We didn't see a lot of water. They, they can go a long time between water breaks. They have a lot of energy. They're light bodied. Some of the bigger foxhounds are like Labradors, big, heavy, and they would never last in this country. They're like, like really the thoroughbreds of the foxhounds. Long legged, great endurance, can go for a long time. So you're doing this sometimes at least three times a week. Um, what's the typical distance that those dogs go? I mean, on a regular hunt, how many miles? 15 miles, easy 12, 15 miles. And on a good day, 25, 30. And you said that you rotate them through mm -hmm. so that they're not doing back-to-back -back days. Yeah, hardly ever. Um, once in a while, you'll get a few as they're learning, you know, they're like, sometimes they get to be like teenagers where they need to go and get really tired, you know, and then you might hunt them for a few days in a row. But we try to rotate. So if we hunt, we hunt four days one week, three days the next week, four days one week. So they'll go every other time. Some of those older dogs go once a week. And then some go, what, once every 10 days. Yeah. Depends on the, the health and the, how, you know, the, where, how tired the hound is, is, has it, is recovering from an injury? Did it have a, how hard its last hunt was? If it was an easy day, then it could certainly go the next day. That's a lot of information that you need to be keeping tabs yeah, on. It's a lot of, it's a lot of moving parts. So this morning, what were some of the characteristics that helped you decide who was coming out uh, as far as the hounds go? You want to have a level, what they call a level pack. You want some young hounds in the front that might make mistakes, like Paulette was saying, that would run off. At the beginning, I don't, you might not have been able to see when we first started, that they just kind of do want to run a little. They were fresh and and they shouldn't do that. But that's just puppies and, and they don't know. And then they get out there and they're like, well, wait a minute. Nobody came with us. And so then a, a good middle solid pack that can get a coyote, get it running, take one, and will stay with it fast enough to stay up with it, but not fast enough that's just gonna run blindly and miss an opportunity. And then it's always good to have your old timers who who I always just say that they're, you know, they would never run a bad line. They wouldn't, they don't make mistakes. So you can watch them. If you get left behind or if you have a little bit of doubt, if you watch those old hats, they can give you some good guidance. Listeners, we're currently trying to determine the future of this show, and we would really appreciate your feedback. If you have a moment, we'd really appreciate it if you'd fill out our listener feedback survey. You can find a link to it in the show notes, or if you go to herobeside.me, click on the podcast button. You'll see a listener feedback survey button at the top of that next page. It only takes about two minutes to complete, and we would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Back to the show. So if you're a no-kill club, what happens when they actually find a coyote? 90%, I mean, 99% of the time, they either don't, we, they either outrun us or outsmart us, or they'll bay them up in some rocks. And that's kind of cool too. Sometimes you'll bay them up and they'll get all around them on the bottom of a rock pile and the coyote will be on top or in bushes. It Once in a while, they actually will catch them, but it is, I mean, it is very rare. If you get a, a an infirmed one, an old one, old coyote or a three-legged one has been caught in a trap because there's, there's some traps here. They trap them. Um, and so the, in that case, or if they'll turn and sort start to fight the hounds or stuff, I've actually seen um, where we chased a young coyote, the hounds did, and he just got tired and he laid down in a sage. And the hounds all just walked all around him and all of us on our horses came around and we we're all like, oh, there he is, there he is. And, and then Angela goes, okay, let's, let's move the hounds and away so he can go. Yeah, see, they really are aggressive like that. I had a, 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 a mountain lion uh, bayed up against a fence and she's sitting there and she's not doing any of the growling or anything. And the hounds are all around her and they're just sniffing her and everything. And she just pops up and takes off. 
and they go after her into some bushes and then they all came back out because she had some babies in there. And she, and she was like, not so much. <laughs> so they really aren't killers. They're, you, you've seen how sweet they are, but uh, they love their job. Do you think the coyotes are terrorized or You know, scared? mostly I don't think so because they're usually pretty far ahead of us. And you have to think that the hounds are running only as fast as their nose can hold that smell of the coyote. And the coyote, he's just running. And so many times we've seen where the coyote will run ahead and, and get up on a little rise or something and turn around and just bark his head off at them. You know, and they're still down here. They're like, they don't hear it even, you know. They might hear it, but they're, they're not... That's not what they're doing. They're connecting the dots to get there. Yeah. So if the whole point of the game is just the fun of the chase, the thrill of the hunt, why not chase rabbits or it's, deer or anything? Well, deer is illegal in most states. Hardly any, you, a lot of states, like Nevada for sure, n no dogs on deer. You can't hunt any deer, any cloven hoof animal with dogs. There's no antelope. Yep. Yeah, no bighorn sheep. No, no. no um, some states, I think Texas, you can run deer with dogs. It's just so disruptive, though, because our goal is to chase coyotes and or bobcats or a lion. Um, and the rabbits are just fractious. They get the hound so excited and they won't focus and put their head down and actually get on a good track. No, they'll They're run just running. by sight. Yeah. And we don't want them doing that. How do you teach them what scent they are allowed to follow? By, by getting them off of the rabbits or the things they're not. Um, we, the staff will run out there and stop them and turn them, whatever it takes to, to keep them from doing that. And after a while, every time, you know, something will pop up that they're not supposed to, to chase or they'll go, oh yeah, I remember now. How do you know what kind of scent they're on? Like if you saw the rabbit, that's one thing, but if they're chasing deer or something, how do you know if it's deer or coyote scent they're on? You don't, well, you get pretty in tune to the hounds and who will lie to you and who you won't. The old steady ones won't, but the puppies will, because you got to remember, they're born to hunt. They don't know what to hunt. We have to tell them, yes, this, no, this, yes, this, not that. Um, and then you can tell, rabbits, you can tell by the pitch of their voice. They're real squeaky and they just are fractious, especially like a day like today. There wasn't any good scenting. So anything that, that was going to be running fast was probably not going to be great. Do you mean the rabbit squeak? No. No, no, the hounds, they make a really squeaky high pitch, you know, noise like that. And, and when most of us will go, oh, they're on rabbits. We got to stop them. Yeah. Do they also bark while they're on coyote? It's just a different kind of bark. Mm -hmm. it's because it's, they're putting their nose down in the track. So they open and then they'll gallop along. So that sound comes, that, that sound is connected to their nose. Whereas the rabbit is just a squealy, just like a house dog running a rabbit or chasing a cat. Why are, why do they bark the whole time that they're hunting? Is it does it help them smell better? Like it's communicating with it, each other? Both, both. It does have it, and I don't really. I'm not really keen on it. Um, I don't want them to hunt and open. I want them to hunt quietly because how are you going to get up close to a coyote if they're all out there just barking? Um, some people don't care. Uh, but I don't. So, but when, so when they open, that means they found a scent and you'll watch all the other hounds run right over to, what would they call it? Honoring that hound. So if the one hound opens, then the other hounds will run right over there and try to find. So when you say open, you mean bark. bark. So they're basically like, Hey guys, I found it. Yep. yep. Come over here and help me. So when you start the hunt, you, you cast them, you just guess a direction and cast them and see. Well, we try to look at the wind. We'd like to hunt into the wind if we can. Just like when you're tracking, you use, you pay attention to the wind. And so do you have your spots where you usually start? Cause that's where the coyotes tend to be, or is it just see what's out there? It depends on where we are. If we go to a new place, a new fixture, you certainly don't know here. We kind of know where the coyotes tend to be. And then the hounds belong to the hunt, mm -hmm. not individual no. members. No. What's the relationship with between the dogs like? Are they like one happy family? Are there cliques? I think they're pretty much one happy family. They all get along pretty well because that's one of the reasons they live communally like that. So they're, and it's, 
it's important that they li- are raised like that because they learn uh, the hierarchy of what works and what doesn't. Who gets to eat first? Who doesn't? Who's the boss? Who's not? So you're talking about the hounds and the horses being really in tune. Is that something that develops over time? Is that a natural, instinctual thing? Over time, I think. Yeah. The, the hounds, the horses have to get used to having dogs all around them. And a lot of horses moving around and going fast and going away. That's a lot. You know, horses are social and competitive. So when horses see other horses gallop away, especially for a staff person, they have to watch all the horses maybe gallop away from them, but they're still there. And it takes a while to get a horse to go, wait, wait, I know I'm supposed to wait. It is, yeah, it's such a fun, there's so many dynamics of it. Yeah, it's just not black and white. <laughs> the way the dogs just run all around the horses and nobody gets kicked or anything. Yeah. They're just, the horses get used to it. So why, on a personal level, what is it about this sport that appeals to you? I started out riding hunting to ride my horse and then I fell in love with the hounds and so now I hunt I I hunt because I want to be with the hounds and uh, I have to ride a horse to do that (laughs) be a long way to walk (laughs) so yeah (laughs) same thing for me I grew up my first job in high school was exercising fox hunting horses I had ridden before but then that was my first job and when I heard hounds I was like that's it. I got to do it. <laughs> yeah, I I rode. I've been riding horses since I was five. And so um, I was out on them for a little while. And I, one of our former members, she's no longer with us. She passed away. She said, I I have you got you got to go fox hunting with me and and ride your horse, ride, ride one of my horses. And you're going to get hooked because you're like a speed freak and everything else anyway. And I did one day. And that was it. I wanted to be a, a member. It's the same. We had a, that new member we introduced. She's an eventer, and she just moved here. And one day is all it took hunting with us. And she goes, I found my people. I'm here. It's, a, it's both. It just, and it's a community. It's a group of friends to go do something with. We, when it's not COVIDing, and I'm, you'll have to come back. When we're not co- doing COVID, we would have all sat out there and had a big lunch together. Yeah, there's a lot of the social stuff that we've had to stop because of the, the COVID. But you, yeah, usually after every hunt, we have what's called a hunt breakfast and we rotate who's, co- who's cooking or making the sandwiches or whatever. So we'll either do it outside at the fixture or we come back to the clubhouse. And that's after every single hunt. And how many d- hounds on average do you take on a hunt? About 30. And how many hounds do you have a- as a club? 67 working hounds. So you mentioned how you fell in love with the hounds. What's so special about them? They're amazing that they have been bred and it, it's instinctual for them to use their nose and, and find things with their nose. It's just, and it, it's too bad you couldn't be closer because like if if one hound opens, he's found something, they all will come and honor it. And then they'll all try to find the trail. And I think I, I talked to you about that before. And so so here goes here goes the coyote smell. And they will circle wider and wider and wider until they find where it is he left from where they first smelled it. And it, it's just brilliant to watch what they just instinctually know. I, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> Many people today mentioned to us that they like this work because of the their adrenaline junkies. And you just mentioned speed freaks. The hounds will find the scent of a coyote. And if it's fresh and it's strong, they will run as fast as they can with their nose working. And, it's, and you, we go with them. So you're just running flat out on your horse. They're running flat out. That's the junkie part. (laughs) We live for that. That's what we live for. (laughs) And as a whip, (laughs) if it happens to go on our side and we're in the front with the hounds, you really live for that. (laughs) Is there anything you want to tell the audience or the general public about fox fox hounds or fox hunting that you don't think they already know? You got to come try it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It, the other thing is we're in nature. 
and a, it's just great to be outdoors. I mean, when COVID happened, so many people that don't have hobbies, that aren't outside, that don't run or bike or any of that, I mean, they were locked up and they were miserable. And we never stopped because we're socially distancing on our horses. We're hardly ever next to each other. And we're outside. It's just like with skiing. You love being out there in the mountains and in the snow. We love being out here in the high desert and being outside. And uh, that's, that's part of it too. That's part of being outside in nature, in the environment. And we try our best to protect the environment too that we go through. We're conservationists. Yeah, as you say, I think all hunters, whether you be a big game hunter, bird hunter, fox hunter, we're all very good land conservation because it's without it, we have no sport. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Oh, you. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you for listening to the show today. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or a number of other platforms. As I mentioned earlier, I'm your host, Shauna T. I'm a professional photographer, and I'm currently working on a photography project about working dogs. If you would like information about this project, please visit herobeside.me and sign up for the newsletter. Again, that's herobeside.me. Thanks so much. See you next time.